Hello, I'd like to um, show another game that I played in the European Club Cup. Um, I'm going to try to do a video and also some analysis of every game that I played um, from this uh, really good competition that we took part in for the Dukes of Kent. In general, I was quite happy with my play, um, but this game and my game against here on Nakamura, I was very upset about. Um, especially my game against Nakamura actually because I really just played like a bit of a baby in that game and um, I definitely wasn't on top form but um, this was played in the first round and I actually lost this game and uh, my opponent was uh, Leonard Gostein, um, a strong Israeli GM who maybe doesn't play so much nowadays but um, um, it was a game where I, I was very confident I was going to win um, most of the way through it so um, I got myself in a bit of time trouble and I messed things up quite seriously um, I think I actually overestimated my chances in this game it's not so clear I'm doing as well as I thought but um, the opening was definitely a success and surprise surprise it was another Dutch defence so I'm black my opponent started c4 so f5 of course and g3 Knight f6, bishop g2, and now already here you have a decision to make which I'll explain more deeply in my forthcoming book on the Dutch. Um, but the decision to make here is whether you play e6 on this move and later, whoop, not e5, uh, e6 on this move and later try to um, maybe achieve the e5 break or if you go for e5 straight away as I did in the game by playing d6. Now Generally, e5 in this position I would consider a slight error because it allows white to strike out with d4. I mean, maybe it's not really an error, but I, I don't generally like these type of structures. Um, in the game, I went for d6, trying to play e5 in one move, gaining tempo. Um, if my opponent plays d4 now, I was going to play e6, transposing to a main line. And my opponent played knight c3, I played e5. And here, the point was, if he goes d4, in this position, excuse me, straight away I can play uh, the move bishop to e7 and I don't think this is such a bad structure for me, even if the queens come off I'm quite happy for example after something like takes, takes, queen takes, bishop takes and I'm going to go c6 next and move my bishop to c7, a5 I actually won a game um, against uh, Nidic, the strong 2700 plus player in a, in a five minute tournament in this kind of uh, uh, position, similar structure, which you can see previously on YouTube. And um, generally I think black's doing okay here. So um, I was quite happy now that after d3, I continue my development, bishop e7, my opponent played the Bovenik setup with e4, he's threatening to take on f5 and b7, so I developed a piece. I expect also c6 is a perfectly sensible move here, but I wanted quick development. My opponent continued knight g2, castled, and now h3. Um, so now the typical Dutch maneuver, queen to e8. And yeah, I was very happy here because let's say he tries castling in this position, which looks very logical. I just continue with queen to h5. And now he has some problems with his h3 pawn. I mean, if he tries something like taken on f5, I just take with a bishop. If he goes g4, I go bishop takes h g4 with a big attack after h takes, knight takes. Well, this is probably just a winning position. So um, he can't recastle too prematurely here. Instead, he played bishop to e3. And after queen to g6, he has a slight problem where he's going to put his king. Because if he castles kingside now, I play f4, which is very good for me after taking on h3. And if he ever castles queenside, his king looks a little bit... Um, insecure over there. So immediately he has to deal with my threat of f4, so he played rook to g1. I played a useful prophylactic move, king to h8, removing the king from this uh, diagonal of uh, b3 to um, g8, which can be quite annoying. And now my opponent played queen to d2. Here I had quite a long think, and I came up with quite an imaginative idea. I played a6, and I guess he was preparing to castle queenside, and by playing a6, I'm really going to try to use the leverage b5, even if it involves sacrificing the pawn to open up his king's position. And after f4, I had the idea of playing f takes e4, this is what happened in the game, d takes e4, and now b5. And I'm really just trying to get to his king. I mean, one variation which I got quite uh, fascinated in was if he grabs the pawn, then I was going to catch him. If he takes on b5, the move I really wanted to play, knight takes e4 may be a possibility, but the move I really wanted to play was d5 here. Blowing the centre over, even at the cost of material, to try to get through to his king. And now, one line I had a look at, for example, something like knight takes c7, bishop to b4. Knight c3, d4. Knight takes a8, 
Now I take on c3, he takes queen to g3 check. And, and now this looked very dangerous for him. Um, something like king to d1, I just go rook to d8. And um, I was analysing some of his lines and I was getting quite excited about the possibility of this. My opponent played a safe option, which I think is quite a good idea. He just went f5. Um, and after queen f7, g4. So he's sacrificing the pawn to bring his own attack down on the g file. So I continue by taking on c4 with my pawn, so my knight has the option of coming to d3. And this position reminded me of a kind of King's Indian uh, defence game, which I remember that Goofield once played, where I remember Goofield basically, it was some sameish King's Indian, where um, he basically got this knight to d3 and a rook on the b file, but his opponent got a massive attack on the king side as well, and it's a very exciting game. So it's just that, I just have memories around this point of that. My opponent continued with g4, and now I move the knight to d7. This knight wants to come around to d3. My opponent moved in with his knight, and my knight comes to c5. And now we reach a very interesting pawn structure. He can't allow my knight to come into d3, so he has to take this, and I recapture back. And even though I have these so-called Irish pawns, they do take away a lot of squares for his pieces, and my knight has a very nice square on either d4 or um, as well as uh, this a b4 square. And I can even go c6 later on to get rid of his outpost. So again, I was very confident here, but the computer actually thinks that my position is not so, not so great here. I mean, it, it thinks I'm better, but not as, as better as I thought it was. He castled, and now I went knight to d4. The problem with knight to b4 is he can flick in g6, which can be tactically bad for me. After knight d4, g6 is a bit different now, so I can take on e2. My opponent played h4, and I played quickly bishop to d8. My plan of playing c6 and bringing my bishop out to a5, possibly. Knight c3, c6, knight to e3, and now rook to b8. Um, maybe I can improve around here, but um, rook to b8 just looks so logical. Um, from this part of the game onwards, I'd say my opponent played very well, actually. Bishop to f1, rook to b4 was now played, and queen to f2, and I played now knight to b5. I actually realised at this point that maybe my position was not as good as I thought it was, but it's just a very unbalanced, interesting position. Um, we're both attacking opposite sides of the board, um, I'm quite sort of confident in this type of position normally, but also it's not clear how I break through. And now my opponent played knight to c2. This is where I had my a really long think, which is a really bad thing to do, so I got myself in serious trying trouble. Um, originally, I wanted to play rook takes b2 here, and I got fascinated with a variation king takes, knight takes c3, king takes c3, bishop a5 check, king b2, queen b7 check, king c1. And I kind of thought around here I must have a strong continuation. Um, because of this open line, my strong bishop, but in actual fact I just could not see anything. For example, if I go bishop to c3, he just goes knight to e3. And if I play something like queen to b4, knight takes c4. And his knight on c4 blocks out a number of my checks, and it's a very good defensive piece. His queen comes over to c2 next, and I don't really have any play at all. Uh, the other line I wanted to play after this king to c1 was bishop takes f5, which I also spent a great deal of time on. The idea is if he takes back on f5, now I have time to play rook b8, and um, something like this is very dangerous for him. Maybe I can play this a couple of moves before. But again, all these lines, I think he's just defending, and I couldn't see a way through. So I spent most of my time analysing this, and instead I played quite quickly knight takes c3. He recaptured, and I went rook to b8. And this is such a bizarre position, but I, I, I think white's probably okay here, especially after his next move, queen to e2, a very strong move. Any endgame is going to be good for him. I play queen to b7 quickly, which is a big mistake. So after queen takes c4, I realise I'm, really, I'm not really doing anything. I mean, if I check him somewhere, like b2, he just goes king to d2, he goes bishop to d3 next, and even rook to b1. And my pieces are looking kind of funny, which is very annoying because all my pieces in the back row not really doing anything, not taking part in the game. So I play queen to e7, back to the square, realising that I'm worse now. H5, I played a5, my ideas are some bishop a6 at some stage, bishop to e2, rook to b7. H6, and here I had about a minute left. Originally I thought I could play queen takes g5, check, but this fails to rook takes, bishop, uh, bishop takes, rook d2, rook d8, bishop d3, rook d7, and now pawn takes 
King takes knight d1, and I think I'm just losing here. So I play g6 very quickly, my opponent played f6, I played queen to e8, and now he's dominating the position. I've really messed this up. Um, I mean, I managed to get back in the game after bishop g4, 2x takes bishop b6, here, queen c8. My opponent now played the horrible move, rook on g to d3. My bishop is such a bad play piece here, and I'm, positionally I'm just dominated. I mean, if it wasn't for the time situation, I would seriously consider resigning this position. But somehow I got back in the game with rook g d3, queen g4. And now we had, uh, I managed to take both these pawns over here. But I even lost this position because even though I won a couple of pawns, his knight proved to be too strong later on and he outplayed me in um, a better position, I'd say. Um, so quite an interesting game. I mean, the opening especially had some uh, quite interesting moments. I mean, one thing for you classical Dutch players out there is that when you play this, uh, when your opponent doesn't play the main move d4, you always have this decision to make. Do you go e6 or do you go d6 and try to get e5 in one move? So I think this is a critical moment already. And then later on, uh, after h3, this queen to e8 move was very is very good move, worth remembering. And then I think another nice move which I was quite happy with is a6 move. And around here, okay, we've got a very interesting position, but my opponent also played very well and I lost the game. So I did well after this to fight back by winning my next three or four games in a row, um, which gave me a lot of confidence. Um, but yeah, still an interesting game in the Dutch, and um, yeah, another one which I probably should include in my forthcoming book. Hope you enjoyed that. Please leave comments.